Hi, everyone. I'm Gordon Happ, Technology Evangelist with Red Hat, and I'm here today to talk all things cloud with my guest, Andrew. Andrew, why don't you introduce yourself? I'm not sure we can get to all things cloud, but we'll get to some things cloud. I'm Andrew, and I'm at Red Hat focused on DevOps, transformation, automation, these kind of things. Um, that's what people know me for. And um, There's so much I would love to talk about today, but here's what I'd like to focus on how the cloud operating model relates to a cloud native organization, especially at the infrastructure level, and how that in turn relates to digital transformation. Let's start with the cloud operating model. This is something we've been having discussions about in earnest since maybe 2010, maybe a little further back, but clearly a lot has happened since then. What do you mean by that term? So when I talk about cloud native operating models, what I really talk about is, is the evolution of all these practices. You know, some people want to call it SRE. Some people want to call it DevOps. They're, they're kind of entwined in various ways. We've been talking about it in, in kind of an external fashion since 2010. But really, you have to say that those, those practices started before that. Right. If you look at what was what was learned building these big web properties, managing these massive infrastructures at the likes of Amazon and Google, they had to adopt to this. Now, I make the same um, comments about DevOps. This wasn't something someone sat down and said, now we're going to have a cloud native operating model. It was the Darwinian pressure to build and manage those systems at ever greater scale that created the processes that allowed that to be possible. So you see the, these sort of things being created, emerging, I'd say even early 2000s, you know, coming out of the big um, web boom, and then they don't get public, publicated or, or publicized, evangelized until later. And SRE isn't really talked about openly until 2016. Let's now shift our attention to what you call the cloud native organization. How is it different from traditional IT? I think this is a bunch of buzzwords colliding, right? Like we 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 have this this tendency to create movements and marketing around different buzzwords, but there's this emergence of new ways of working that goes back and 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 there's threads on the technology side and on the process sides. So there's you know roots of this when we talk about DevOps all the way back to Deming and manufacturing and Acoff and some of these other people that are you know the the, the shoulders of giants, if you will. And then you, you have the agile movement that kind of brought this sort of flexibility to what you're going to build from a software perspective. But for a long time, agile and when and when the agile manifesto was signed, software was shipped on physical media. So you, you had a release, it was cut on you know CD or whatever the media was at the time, and then shrink wrapped and shipped. And then we shift to this as a service model, and that's what Created that pressure to get to those models and get to this thing. So it's to me, it's the it's the confluence of all of these tools and all these processes that allow you to build these scalable, resilient systems and also flexibly change them to meet the the, you know, the needs of the customer and the organization in the market. Now, yeah, I think this is a very common theme that we see that a lot of different threads are coming together and then there is a certain maturation and suddenly it makes sense. So, you know, people will say, oh, a cloud. We were doing time sharing back in the 1960s. But obviously in practice, there's a huge difference to what you could do in the 1960s and what you can do today. And similarly, you see uh containers enabling this cloud native sort of application development that is not necessary, but it reduces a lot of friction. So, so an aspect of it is about the time scales. And if you look, go back to what you're talking about, you know, the mainframes and time sharing, then, then you certainly have the opportunity to do some of these workflows, but the cost of change tended to be uh, uh, higher, right? And then you can move into this phase of client server and the cost of change to provision hardware was a purchase order and maybe even months. And then you get to these abstractions of virtualization. And then now we have containers where starting and stopping a container is on the order of seconds. And, and so that allows you to do certain things at a time scale when you start thinking about auto scaling or recovering that you couldn't do with those older architectures. I'd like to get your take on what digital transformation is in the context of this conversation? 
I mean, it's another collision of a bunch of buzzwords coming together. And, you know, the, the, the joke I make sometimes is marketing ruins everything. But there's, there's this tension that we feel about what's possible and what we see our organizations doing. So digital transformation sort of, I wouldn't say it's reemerged, but it's something people talked about for decades. And I think there's, there's kind of this wave of like digitizing process. And then, and then now even you still have this bifurcation between what, what people will say digital transformation in the, in the larger analyst sense uh, of buying some SaaS and doing some automation for these workflow processes. And then there's what I, I try to help people do um, for my career is can you create those digital experiences? Can you create that, that digital automation and make that something that your company is capable of? So every single one of us, I mean, we're literally talking through the internet. Whoever's watching this is probably watching through the internet. I'd imagine the device they're watching it on has a bunch of capabilities. I carry a supercomputer in my pocket that's more powerful than every computer on the planet when I was born. It allows me to order food, manage my finances, book travel, all this kind of stuff back when we could do these sort of things, which I'm looking forward to hopefully doing again. So the, to me, digital transformation is about helping these enterprises close the gap between what every individual in that organization knows is possible in their life as an individual interacting with those digital realities and what they see their organization and the capabilities that they bring to their customers and to each other on a daily basis. That, that's a huge gap in a lot of places and that's creating you know, a bunch of tension and, and opportunity. Finally, I'd like to bring all this together under the umbrella of redefining IT as a competitive advantage. And this was something that seemed to be kind of falling out of favor outside the startup world for a while. You know, IT doesn't matter from Nick Carr. Um, how do you think about this question? I think Nick Carr's assertion, and that's a bit getting a little bit long in the tooth, right, since that was first published, yeah. it's provably false. And, and I think that one of the defining advantages or the defining qualities of the cloud natives that everyone sort of watches and aspires to be is that they frame IT as a competitive advantage. And if you go look at the way that, you know, the, the reports they file with the SEC, what they're investing and spending their money on, they're making massive investments in IT infrastructure to deliver those outcomes. So I think that there's, there's a commodification of certain aspects yeah. of IT and, and choosing where you're going to be creating value and competing for value. It doesn't make sense for most enterprise organizations to decide we're gonna compete as a cloud. That, that's that's um, probably not the game you wanna win, but there's lots of these things that you can take advantage of as that IT commodifies to build higher and higher level of value for your customers, for your employees, creating those digital experiences and connecting that back to the core business that you're running. Well, thank you, Andrew. Thanks for having me. It was fun.